it was gone to the stage where every day was a bad day. I, I was waking up in the mornings and it just, there was nothing good about the day. I didn't want to get up out of bed, which wouldn't be me. Everything was an effort and I just didn't want to do it. You know, I am 23, I was sitting on a chair crying in her cup of tea, you know, I was like, it just doesn't happen, you know, it's not what you do. And Adrian McGold, with the Trust Club doctor, came in, sat down beside me, we spoke for five minutes and he said, yeah, and he says, you're suffering from depression. He said, I said, half the country suffering from depression. Trying to remain positive is the hardest thing. It really is, because there's a lot more, a lot, lot more, there's a lot more bad rides or bad days than, than good ones. And, you know, your biggest knock is probably going to be yourself. You're driving for miles, hours and in. You're on your own, like, you know, and it's a lot of time to think. And I, I think it has a lot to do with overthinking as well. You have the radio, but the, the, the mind does start thinking, you do start thinking, and I suppose you do start overanalyzing things. I think there's a lot more people in sport will have issues with mental health than, than people ever get to know because of the lifestyle that sport uh, brings. You know, it's, sport is not a very level thing, you know, it's, it's not like going to work every day and having a nine to five job and the same things happen every day. You know, when you experience the highs and obviously you're going to experience the lows and it's, it's coping with the lows that is the most difficult part. Jockeys are no different to most other performers in terms of their scrutiny. Everything you do as a jockey on a, on a racehorse at a race meeting is scrutinised. You are put under the, the microscope even more so than ever before. Just like any other sport, there are no secrets left. If you perform in public as an athlete, you are opening yourself up to a huge audience every day. Most people in the world do not do that. If they make mistakes or they have a bad run, they are doing it in private. Well, I sat in a fucking dark room at times, just looking at the fucking wall thinking, bad day on a Saturday thinking, this is the way it goes, like, not going out. Don't turn the TV on. You know, go home after racing on a Saturday. If I can ask it, have a bad day. You have to go straight up to your room and sit in the fucking dark for the night. It's not right. But that was when I was young. So it was. That was when I didn't know any different. I was so low that I was still getting a bit of a lift from riding the winner, but it, it was it was just getting me back to an arm. I used to think to myself, how can I get out? of going riding out, you know, what, what excuse can I come up with? What excuse can I come up with not to go race? You just isolate yourself from everything and you really do think you are the only person suffering with this. You're the only person in this black hole. For a long time, I didn't realize what was wrong. I just thought I was tired. I might have a lie-in on a Sunday and I'd be grand on Monday. I could lie in Saturday, Sunday, Monday and it wasn't getting any better. Speak to Dickie Johnson, to AP, to, to all, everyone. You know, all the top jockeys, they've all had ups and downs. And you know, and it's, 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 it's unfortunately, it's, it's part and parcel of the game. It's, it's a hard game. You know, we're all out there, we're all out wanting, you know, the best rides and the good horses to ride and, and the good winners. When you're young, you get on young horses because you've got a good claim, and then you get taken off horses because they want another, you know, an older, more experienced jockey to ride them. So, you know, every jockey out there, is, they will experience good times and, and, and bad times. But racing will test them like no other. It's very individual. And of all the sports I've come across, it's a sport in which the competitor, i.e. the jockey, gets beaten the most. They have to learn to how to handle that as much as the, the easy bit, which is sometimes winning. When I finally decide to retire, it'll be sort of on my terms, and I'll be hopefully, uh, you know, retiring, you know, you know, fulfilled. I've had a, you know, a fulfilled career, and the first time round, I just just got a bit, a bit, a bit fed up, and you know, it was around May, June, July time, and things were getting a bit quiet, and I just wasn't getting much out of it and I was finding the, 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 the driving a drag and I just felt like I'd, I'd, I'd run my course. I was in a real bad place so I, I went to a, a mental hospital for a week or ten days just, just to clear my head a bit of a break, put a little piece in the racing post, told everyone that I'd been out and suffering with a little bit of depression. No big deal really. I walked into the weigh room in Gorn the, the day after I did the piece and David Casey cracked the joke and from there the ice was broke. It was a normal day at the races. Take a deep, big deep breath, sit down and just talk to people. You know, it might be, you mightn't hear what you want to hear, but still, it, it will definitely help. You, you can speak to a professional, you can speak to a friend, you know, but definitely the first step I thought was just taking the cork off the bottle and letting some of it out, without doubt. The world's best coach I've ever come across in sport told me recently, the greatest strength you have as a human being or a performer is to ask for help. 
I think in the past we saw it as a weakness, a vulnerability, the fact that we might not be good enough, might not be hard enough, might not be brave enough. That is complete nonsense. I, I got so many messages on Facebook and Twitter and everything. I got a message one day from from another jockey and says, you know, thanks a million, you, you've saved my life. What, what you've done, you know, I thought I was alone. Not being selfish, I did it for me and not anyone else, but the way it's worked out, it's, it's really helped a lot of people, which, which is great. Always surround yourself with the best possible people. But sometimes I think you need to go further afield for that support. That might not be a racing expert who knows he won the 3.30 at Haydock yesterday. Sometimes that can almost make it even more pressurised because they know everything about you. I think it's important to have a mental health line. It's a very difficult thing to approach a subject with someone that might not understand. You can have a private, confidential conversation with someone about what you're thinking, then it can only be a good thing. And it's, I think it's a good thing that when people do feel like that, that they take the opportunity and use the, the helpline and speak to the people get advice from them, you know, that, that, that's, you know, they've done all the studying and what may, what you may be suffering from and what may make you better, so it can only help you. It is becoming more common knowledge that that helpline is available and I suspect what happens is people who've used that helpline and have been getting that one-to-one -one support begin to talk about it with their closest colleagues in the weighing room and word gets out and it gets used more. It's as simple as you call the helpline, they will book an initial face-to-face -face assessment after which a plan of treatment will be recommended which could include anything from cognitive behavioural therapy, uh, counselling, full psychiatry. It really depends on what the issue that individual is facing. I think jockeys find it hard to talk about mental health problems because I think there's this stigma of them being really tough and being mentally strong and not having any weaknesses. and been a real man's sport but um, you know at the end of the day I think no matter who you are I think it, it always helps to talk to people and talk to the right people and you're lucky enough to have you know someone confidential that will keep those things um, private and if they do make it better then you should do it. Racing demands help more than any other sport I've come across so don't be afraid to, to open up don't be afraid to talk go and seek the best advice possible for whatever problem you may face. It's the best and most important thing you will ever do, more important than any horse you will ever ride.